or selling his stopwatch inside the clock app, stuff like that. I have an idea. Years ago, way before this, I got an idea. I used to do exactly this on my Galaxy S3 with an app called SwipePad. GotInstrumentals.com. If you saw how I was recording this, you would die. As a daily ritual, I was having some issues with my internet last night. If you live in upstate New York, there aren't many, fuck you man, options for internet. It's either Verizon or Spectrum. Uh, the cheaper one is Spectrum, so that's probably what most people are going to go with. Leading to an issue. The way, the way that this um, cable stuff works, basically, is to think of it as a highway. You got a bunch of people on the highway trying to move at a certain time, like rush hour, you get traffic jams. You get fender benders and middle fingers. So, obviously, you get the metaphor. During those times, it's going to be more difficult for you to connect to the internet. If you do, it's going to be more difficult to maintain a stable connection. Yada yada, you know how it goes. What this, what this is, I had an idea, matter of fact, I had an idea. Because there are a lot of people out there that just go with it, and they deal with it, and you, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to live that life. I'm just going to walk you through it. It's not, it's not going to be crazy. You're going to understand. And when you're done, I'm, you're going to have better. It's going to work better. It's not going to be full flawless. It's not going to be the best thing you've ever seen, but it'll be a little better. So... And it annoys me so bad. Like, I just want to lay down. If, if my internet cuts out, I got to get up. I got to unplug the router. I got to... If you live upstate, this happens to you. I'm not a native upstate New Yorker. I'm from Long Island, okay? Where things make sense. Our internet works pretty damn good. I'm going to show you those methods right now. I apologize for the audio quality. We're just going to have to deal with it. All right, these instructions are going to be for Windows 10. I'm not sure if they're the same for Windows 8 and 7. Most likely, uh, it, matter of fact, yeah, it should be the same. Uh, if not, it's similar. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to list some DNSs that I use. Where are the sticky notes, man? Are you kidding me? So, off the top of the head, yeah, not now, okay, off the top of the head, here are a couple that I use. Uh, this is going to be Google, the first one, so you're going to want to type in 8.8.8.8, and secondary, um, I think it's 8.8.4.4, uh, and then another good one is going to be Cloud Fair. And that is 1.1.1.1, and secondary is 1.0.0.1. That's pretty fast too. Uh, they say this is the fastest. Uh, I think this is Cisco. That may not be how you spell Cisco, but whatever. 208.67.22. Two 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 and secondary two oh eight uh point six seven point two twenty two twenty that's the one I use they claim to be the fastest. Uh, we're gonna go in to adapter setting in the settings. Okay, we'll just go from the settings. So setting network and internet change adapter options. You're going to find your Wi-Fi, which is here. You're going to go to Properties, and you're going to want to go to the IP4, Internet Protocol version 4. Properties, Attain DNS Server automatically. That's going to be your ISP's DNS that they're using, that they just hit you with. Uh, in most cases, it's not the fastest thing. So we're going to want to go down one to use the following DNS, and we're going to want to type in our 
DNSs that we pick out that it won't let me look at because my life is, is really bad like that. Uh, yeah, so in this case, I'm going to use the one I prefer, which is 208. Six seven two 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 and I'm gonna do the secondary you're gonna just manually input the secondary two twenty two twenty and then we're gonna go to validate settings upon exit it's gonna run a Windows scan once you close it out it's gonna try to detect issues that aren't there this is where awesome like that and that is how you do that you know, I'm just going to go to public DNS, and it'll explain you know, in a little more depth, and you can find a list if you look for it, and there you go. So it'll give you, this looks like it'll give you a rating, it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's how we do that, very simple. <coughs> Let's talk about wireless bands real quick. Most new routers are dual band routers, meaning they have a two and a half gigahertz band and a five gigahertz band. The five gigahertz band is gonna be your better band. It's gonna give you a stronger connection, higher speeds. So if you're running a, a very high speed internet, that's gonna be your band of choice. Problems, it does not go through walls as good as the two and a half gigahertz band does. Um, but that's really it. That's gonna be your preferred band. If you're if you're not running a huge distance from your access point to your device, that's the one. If you have multiple devices, like I said, your best bet is to keep both bands open and use both bands. This way you don't congest one and make it unusable and make everybody else in the house angry. But if you live alone or you only live with your partner, you just crack, just get rid of the two and a half because you don't need it. I have three devices. I have a Fire Stick 4K, so it requires a high bandwidth. Uh, my laptop, which obviously requires a high bandwidth, and sometimes I'll throw my phone on there. Not all the time. That 5 gigahertz band works well um, when I have all three devices connected. Most of the time, however, I keep my laptop on a wired connection. We'll get to that in a minute. You know, just let it go. Just let it go. All right? Enough. It's show and tell time. <laughs> Bet you didn't expect that. Obviously, the best way to stop all the problems with a wireless connection is to not use a wireless connection. Most devices, including new cell phones, have adapters specifically for RJ45 ports. An RJ45 port is an Ethernet port. So, you go out, you get a USB-C, like I have the Samsung S9, and a couple of earlier generations use USB-C as well. You can go out and find a USB-C to RJ45 port, or you can go out and find a USB-C <laughs> USB hub with an included RJ45 port. If you're one of the people out there that went out and bought a new laptop, like, a, like one of the new MacBooks, or um, the Dell XPS like I have it's all USB-C there are no USB-A ports so you go out and you use that same USB-C hub or adapter to RJ45 and voila you are now able to connect your modem directly to your computer and skip out with all the nonsense that comes with a wireless connection I know it's a laptop it's designed to be portable but sometimes you just gotta you gotta give a little get a little you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying? This right here is a TOTU USB-C hub. Um, it's, it was, I think, 30, 40 bucks. I have two USB-A 3.0 ports and a USB 2.0 port, which is what I'm using for my Logitech keyboard. And on the back of it, it has an RJ45 port. So, right into the USB-C. So it's not super expensive to hook your computer up to the Ethernet directly. In fact, it's quite cheap. I think just a straight USB-C to RJ45 is 10-15 bucks. 
and it's well worth it if you don't want if you don't want an intermittent connection if you don't want just random weird internet problems that spectrum happens to include in their high speed internet package you can just skip out on all the nonsense if you're using your phone if that's your if that's your main driver that's how you use the internet and get your work done and maybe you're in school or you have a job that requires you to use the internet on a daily basis and you're using your phone if that's the case even whether it's iPhone or Android or Chrome OS or whatever um, make sure that what you're doing is the only process that's using the internet at that time don't leave a whole bunch of different applications open that are consuming your bandwidth. Your phone is going to be fighting to decide which application gets the most bandwidth. Face timing somebody or your Google Google duoing. So that's the only application that's open. Got a bunch of fighting for bandwidth. It's going to mess your connection up pretty much regardless of what equipment you have anyway. So there's that. Listen, man, I'm sorry. I know this isn't what you want to hear. I know it's not why you watch this video. But if you follow the first few steps, you should be in good shape. So, there's that. But, at the end of the day, if you want to eliminate all the problems that come with a wireless signal, you just got to get a better router. Because the one that Spectrum Internet provides, it's, it's horrible. Ask anybody. This is a bad router. So, what you need to do is go on Amazon, go to Best Buy, go to Walmart, find a, a modem router combo of a good brand and use that. I use a Netgear Nighthawk. It's awesome. I almost never have a break in my internet. But that's really it, man. Like, this is what I do. Uh, I've made all these changes to my own setup. And I'll tell you, I really don't have that many problems with it anymore as opposed to when I was using the Spectrum router. This is a bad router. So, uh, I hope all this stuff helped. I really do. Because there's nothing worse than a bad internet connection. And hopefully these tips, you know, sell them. There are 